baby. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. So, you know, I, and I'm going to tell you a, a little funny, and then I'm going to go ahead and introduce Pastor and sit down. So, you know, so those of you who don't know, my mother uh, transitioned to be home with the Lord Thursday. And so, uh, uh, right now, anything that I do around the house or, or wherever, my excuse is, well, you know, I'm grieving. <laughs> I'm in mourning. So, you know, I just get away with a whole lot because I'm mourning. But uh, I, I truly am mourning, but I'm happy this morning. I'm excited this morning. Amen. Y'all know I love the Lord, and y'all know me. You know I love my mama, for real. Amen. So now, now I'm not going to stand up here and say, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, you know. I love my mama, but uh, I am thankful to God that she knew the Lord, and I just trust God that she's in a much, much better place. Amen. And so um, I appreciate my husband, my pastor, for all of the support that he has given me up to this point. I uh, just appreciate Pastor Blaine. I want you to know he preached last Sunday, and if he... Uh, it, it helped me. The message actually helped me. And so I'm looking forward to today's message because I still need help. And I'm in mourning. So say amen for Pastor Bland. Good morning. Give the Lord another hand praise. All the way over here in Helena, Arkansas, by way of the bridge. <laughs> Amen. Turn to the book of Joshua. Amen. Book of Joshua. I don't think I do too much preaching out of Joshua. This is Karuf. Good to see you. Each of you is so precious. Uh, Y'all give the Lord a hand praise for our, our soldier, the Holly, back with us. Amen. Wave to the people. Now, all through the years, he was halfway sleeping through. I'm going to see if he's still sleeping. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, we are so proud of him, and we are proud of his dad and mom and uh, your efforts. And let me tell you something. You just have to stick with it. Uh, a guy told me a long time ago, he said, Brother Bland, stick with your kids. Stick with your kids. And thank God for love, because love will keep us together. I know that ain't the Bible. I think it was a song, Captain and Tennille. But love will keep us together. And none of us that are today what we were. Uh, we did not get here overnight, Nero. Somebody had to suffer along with us. Somebody had to allow us to become what God was making us. I think it's 2 Corinthians, Brother Corman Sam's where the Bible says that we are changed from glory to glory. And Shrika, God bless you. And so then, uh, you should set yourself for the journey. And do not become, Brother Tyrone Staten, so caught up in your present circumstances. Knowing, that forgetting those things that are behind. And pressing toward the mark of the high calling. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I find out, Nero, that something that can really mess you up is your expectations. You mad at the people, but really, it, it, people ain't the one that mess you up. What messed you up was your expectations of people. We must always keep our hope and our trust in God. Because God is the only eternal one. He's the only consistent one. He's the only one that will never fail. He's the only one that will never come to an end. And so then, he is so good that he came and died in our place that we might have eternal life. And so then, we, he takes our sin and he gives us eternal life eternal life. We've been in a series about seasons. 
Nothing stays the same. Nothing. Nothing. Come on, Pastor. And it's only those who can transition. Yeah. I'm a music guy. I love music, all types of music. I even like some country music. Don't tell nobody. But all, I like music. But the ones who are iconic, the ones who really make their mark, are the ones who are not a flash in the pan, the ones who just not for one season, but as generations ain't bet gold, they, they are able to tread like the Isley brothers. Uh huh. You see, you see, some of us was made off the Isley brothers, and then our grandchildren was made off the Isley brothers. It, it's just they, they have the staying power, they have the ability to transition. And, and God changes the same, but God, our idea, our concept of God changes. And, and God reveals, layers like an onion, he reveals to us who he is. Just like Job. Job was a servant of God. But what Job went through caused him in the end of the book to say, I thought I knew you. I had heard about you. He said, but now I see and I know you for myself. I'm going to tell you something. It's something, you excuse me, right? It's something about trouble that'll cause you to know. I don't know what it is. It's good to be on the mountaintop. But it's something about being down in the valley that if you really love him, it'll bring you close to him. It's something about being down in the valley that will focus you so we've been talking about uh, uh, seasons. And so what I want to talk about this t today is, if you will look at your neighbor, just, just look at them right there now, and just tell them very simply, through, uh, uh, a season of preparation. A season, help me today, Lord. A preparation. Uh, I, it wasn't Isaiah, but it was Jimmy Lee Wilson. Some of y'all know him as Bootleg. That told me. He said, Pastor, it's not so much the suit you wear, what folks got to say about you, but it's preparation. <sighs> Look at your neighbor and tell them, you need to get prepared. You need to get, don't nobody feel sorry here for folk dying and, and, and you ain't got no insurance, you ain't got no money. You done lived all these years, you have not made any. I can start preaching right now. You ain't made no preparation. JB, it ain't like you didn't know it was coming. But a season of preparation. You, you, you're standing on, on the precipice, you're standing on the verge. So the day is long spent. Yeah. Childhood is gone. Yes, is. Uh, and now God has brought you into a season of preparation. And do you know that sometimes when you get ready to go somewhere, you have to leave folks that's not prepared? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all. The hardest thing in the world to get to church is, uh, Sheriff, is to be fooling with people that ain't ready. I told you, I told you, I don't like to be late. I told you the church started at a certain time. I don't like to be late. I like to be there on time. I, I feel more comfortable when I get there and, and whatever. So when I get there, you need to be ready. But I get here and you ain't prepared. A season. Preparation. You know, uh, it's just a beautiful thing when a person is prepared. Yeah. When a person is prepared, it make it easier on other folk. And I can say this about a lady, about, 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 I call uh, Mother Campbell, I told her, I call her the, 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 the grand old girl because she was resolute. We preached last week about resolute. Let me tell you something. You ought to know God to the point 
that you are not wavering. You are not tossed about with every wind and doctrine. You ought to know God. You ought to come to Bible study enough. You ought to study yourself enough until you know God for yourself. And you are not tossed about with every wind and doctrine. You know what you know, what you know that you know that God died on Calvary Hill for my sin. That his blood was efficacious. And that he took my sins for away. And that it is not dependent upon my behavior, not dependent on how I feel, not dependent on how well my record is, but it's dependent upon the effectiveness of his blood. You ought to be resolute. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, my, my wife preached a message one time about sucker punch. <laughs> sucker punch is when you stand up there woofing, doing all that talking, and all of a sudden they knock you out. You talking, and they get ready to knock you out. And sometimes when you're not prepared, that's what the devil will do for you. Jesus talked about the man that built his house upon sand. And when the wind and the rain came, you see, you can't come to Bible study because you need to go and say, got a sale over Dillard's. You're not faithful, you're not, you're not, you're not resolute, you're, you're whatever. And then when the storm comes, because let me tell you something, everybody get a turn. Everybody get a turn. You're looking upside my head, but your day coming too. And when it comes, you can't stand, you falling out, you want everybody to feel inside, baby. Everybody get a turn. Everybody get a turn. And don't that you need to get this right. You you want to get put your folks picture all on you and you wanna then you want everybody to stop because your folks done died and everything. Baby, we don't feel like that. We don't feel like that. And you didn't feel like that when it was mine. You need to get prepared. It's a thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, it wasn't none of Ezekiel, but it was sugar free. <laughs> they said, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> Boy, I'm preaching right now. You hear me? If you stay ready, Sheriff, you ain't got to get ready. Ain't nothing wrong with getting prepared. Ain't nothing wrong with acting like it's a wise man would prepare. It's just like folk walking around here spending every dime that you got. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to come a time, they ask me about it, that you ain't going to feel like working for money. You're going to be just that tired. You ain't going to have that hustle. You ain't going to have that move. And, by, and at that time, you ought to have some income coming in where you ain't got to get out here and get among these folks and fight. And, and, I'm getting some help this morning. I, 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 life got seasons, and it's some of us, if we're in a season of preparation. And, and, and Nero, you feel a whole lot better when you're prepared. I, I hate it's coming or, or whatever. You know what? Uh, when it came time, it fell all of a sudden. It seemed like. Now, Deborah, mom, 90 years old, it really wasn't all of a sudden, but it seemed that way. Because she was up, she was driving, she was doing she was all this right here, and one day she fell, she couldn't walk, and next thing we know, she getting ready to leave him. But she sat there on that bed, and she talked to each and every one of them. Don't cry for me. I'm prepared. Ah, I run up out of here. I didn't just, I didn't, I didn't. I've been preparing. All my life for this right here. This is my reward. And I've been preparing for it. And now that it's here, I'm getting ready to cross over. Y'all ready to roll? Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua, the first chapter. Joshua. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. The Bible says in, in, in Joshua 1 and 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, saying, 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Put a pen right there, Pastor. Well, in our text, uh, we see now that Moses has passed on. That season is over with. It was a wonderful season. Oh, God used Moses in such a way. You see, the children of Israel were down in Egypt land, and they cried out for a deliverer. And God did not find anybody that was doing well, but God went on the backside of the mountain and found an old backslidden preacher who had to leave town because he had killed somebody. God, I want you to say, know something, that, that God prepares you in a funny way. God does not prepare you in success, but God prepares you in failure. What are you saying, Pastor? I said, when God chooses those who, when he calls them, they go like this, who? Me? Why? You see, God is love, and love never has a reason. Love just is. If you got a reason for the person that you love them, you don't really love them. Because whatever that reason is, it's going to leave. And it's going to be just the fact that you just love them. And so now, here the Bible says that Moses, God's servant, is dead. Now, I know you know, all you biblical scholars, that Joshua is actually the same name as Jesus. You're sure. And so Moses was the lawgiver, but we had to find out, Cricket, that the law could only take us so far. You see, the law told us what to do, but it gave us no wings to fly. The law said don't lie, but it didn't stop us from lying. The law said don't steal, but it didn't stop us from stealing. And so the law could only take us Woo, so far. And so the law had to pass on. But thank God that the law passed it to Joshua or to Jesus. And so now in the season of preparation, Christy, what was the preparation? The preparation was 40 years wondering. I ain't help about three folk then. <laughs> Y'all, y'all said people wonder sometimes. But Pastor Blaine, how did you get so free by wandering in the wilderness? Huh? It's a, it's certain things I just ain't gonna do no more because I don't want to walk the back street crying no more. Thank you, Jesus. And so they wandered in the wilderness. You ever just been confused? You just ever been to the place you couldn't get no peace? You ever been to the place where you just scratch your head? You ever been to the place where you was like, like little Milton, you said, why am I treated so bad? You ever been to the place where you said, now folks who you love, folks who you care for, folks who you take care of, you, they turn around and treat you like you got a tail. They don't care nothing. I'm wondering in the wilderness. But now, wondering in the wilderness prepared me. And that's the reason Carl Ray, sometimes I can tell them when they try to, you know, play me. I said, baby, been there. Done that. Got the t-shirt and the hat. And they, brother Burm, if that ain't good enough for him, I tell them, said, honey, I ain't new to this. I'm true to it. Just because I don't do it no more, I don't, don't think I don't know it. Don't think I can't smell it when I'm around it. I see it coming. And I learned that he prepared me. Look at somebody and tell him, say, he prepared me in the furnace. He prepared me in the furnace. He prepared me in the furnace. I, I come up out of a hot place. I, I come up where other folks got burned up. Other folks didn't make it. Other folks gave up. God prepared me. God took me through. And I'm still standing. Sheriff, not because I'm all of that, but the Lord, he preserved my life. I, I got to say this, Sister something. I got to say this right here. 
Sometimes you see me and I throw my hands up. You don't know why I'm throwing my hands up. But I'm throwing my hands up. I'm saying, Lord, thank you for, 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 thank you for, for, thank you for keeping my mind. Keeping my mind. See, if you ain't never been to the place where you thought, and it wasn't so much what I was going to do to somebody, what, to myself, it's what I was going to do to somebody else. And so I said, Lord, thank you for keeping, for keeping my mind. A season of preparation. You see, sometimes, Sister Lisa stating what looked like it's going to destroy you is really only preparing you. Poor David, his daddy didn't think nothing about him. His brothers didn't think nothing about him. When they got ready to pick the king, they did not even put his name in the pool. Oh, you should have gave God some praise right then. You, 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 you know you wasn't the favorite one. You know you wasn't the one that, and you done turned around and had to help everybody in the family. They did not even call him to the meeting. But Lady Deborah, look at God, that when they got ready to anoint the king, God would not let the oil flow until he got there. Uh, a season of preparation. Well, how, how are you preparing? You ain't the, what, and David said, hold on. He said, let me give you my pedigree. You see, God prepared me on the backside of the mountain. God prepared me. <laughs> Linda, you weren't supposed to get the position. You weren't nothing but sick. You weren't nothing but just clerical. You weren't nothing, you didn't have the education. You didn't have the put or whatever. But you see, a season of preparation. Many times you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. You don't even know why the Lord, why is this happening? God, why is this right here? And then God let sheriff, let God, God let people turn their back on you so that when you get in the position, you understand nobody put me here but God. You see, Nero, when you get somewhere, everybody want to take credit. When you get blessed, everybody want to say what they did. But you know that when you was going through, ain't nobody had nothing to fight. That's the reason God said, look, I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. And I'm going to do it on this wise. I'm going to let you eat from trees that you didn't even plant. I'm going to let you live in houses that you didn't build. That house I'm living in right now, many times as a little colored boy, on my way out there to the golf course to shag balls for 50 cents. All day for 50 cents so that we could have lunch money the next day. <laughs> I didn't know that I would be living in that house. One day, a season of preparation. <laughs> Deacon, sometimes the preparation is so hard. <laughs> um, Harlan, I know this right here. You just got, you, 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 you pass basic training, you pass advanced individual training. But in basic training, you see, when you get there, uh, they, they, they put the soldier's suit on you, but you ain't no soldier. And, and, and nobody likes basic training. Nobody likes it. Uh, nobody likes how you talk to. They call you a recruit. They don't call you no soldier. You, 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 you don't deserve to be called a soldier. You have not prepared you. You're not ready for it. And if there's some suffering that you got to go through, that, 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 that's some preparation. But it's, it's a season of preparation. And, and if I hold on and, and, and to go through my preparation, God is prepared. That's the reason that my mother-in-law on her deathbed could sit there and smile. I got pictures of it. Deborah, Deborah made recordings of it or whatever. She could sit there and smile. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I didn't stay at home. I got up and I went to church. I, I, I didn't do what I wanted to do. 
I feel sorry for selfish people. I feel sorry for selfish people. You don't never show up for nobody. If it ain't your benefit, you ain't coming. I feel sorry for you. Because you see, God prepares you. And when your day comes, oh my God. Somebody said, who shall be able to stand? Thank you, Jesus. He says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. That the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over Jordan. Mm. You've been tested and you've been tried. Ooh, I thank God for my wife. I, I want you to know, so I do. I thank God for my wife, because I'm going to tell you what. It don't make us no different. Who don't like it or however and everything, because I'm going to tell you what. We, we true to this right here, and I told them this early this morning. What you see is what you get. What you see right now is the same thing when we woke up this morning. It is, because God is real. And life is real. And Fantrika, won't it show up? Won't it show up? You called me one day and you said, Pastor, you said they, they say he's sick. I can't find the Pastor. He got dead. Then you called me back and you said, they say he's all right. They said, and then you called me back and said, my, my husband gone. My husband gone. But yet, you came through that door this morning. Yet you got your head up. Yet your testimony is I find no fault in him. And the good thing about it is is that the days that y'all had, your husband adored you. You got more in that short time than some folk get in all a season. And no, I know that when you look back on it, you can see where God was preparing you. God was, hey, a season of preparation. Look at somebody and tell them, say, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Because God is preparing me to cross over. He says here, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I'm in verse 3, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down sun shall be your coast. Let me say this right here, JB. I didn't understand this. God is a God that calleth those things that are as though they're not. And God will tell you some crazy stuff for you to stand on. God will, take, God, God will tell you some stuff that if you tell somebody else, they know you a fool. I thought you was a fool, but now I know you a fool. <laughs> Abraham, Sarah, 90, 100. By this time next year, a season of preparation. How are you preparing me, God? When you got me going out getting another son that's not the son, how are you preparing me when my womb is yet barren? How are you preparing me when I see nothing? How are you preparing me when everything I see seems like the opposite of what you said? I'm preparing you because I'm trying to get through your mind. That the only thing that you can stand on is what I said. If I said, I'll watch over my word to perform what that look like. What that looks like is, Sheriff, even though they steal your election, even though folks you paid to be on your campaign go help others. Further down the road. When you done done all you can to be sheriff, I'm going to bring you in. And when I bring you in, you're going to be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of the water. 
that shall not be moved. Uh, no wonder it is, Sister Carew, that the old lady, you know, the one that had the wig on that didn't quite cover the naps in the back, the one that you know didn't ever have no money, but all the time trying to give you something. No wonder it is that sometimes Nero in church seemed like the most inappropriate times. She would holler out, I wouldn't give nothing. I wouldn't give nothing for my journey. Sometimes people, I know they get tired of me talking about it. I was kicked out of three schools. I had 53 hours of Fs. I was hitting the head. I went to jail every place. I know they get tired of it. But I told God, if you bless me, I'll never be shamed to own you before man, beast, and the police. A preparation! A season of preparation. Ella Watson, them used to sing a song. Ella Watson would say, my Lord. Sister Cynthia be right in there with him. Nathan Lacey. They said, my Lord, getting us ready for that great day. Y'all, last two weeks, I saw a soldier that was ready. I saw a soldier cross over. I saw a soldier did not flinch one time. I saw a soldier that said, I'm ready. And I know I'm 65. I've been knowing her ever since me and Deborah been together ever since 18 to 17 years old. And I don't watch. Now I'm telling you what, she's so resolute, she get on the nerve a whole lot. Because she believed what she believed. But God prepared her. And I'm in a season of preparation right now. We are almost through. Just give me a few more minutes. A few more minutes. Turn, if you will, over to. Yes. Chapter 4. And we're going on in. It's at eight minutes, so we might not use that long. Yeah. You know what, uh, Harley? It was a shock to me when I first got to basic training because, I, like I told you, they treated us so well when we first got there. They gave us brand new socks and drawers. Put some money in the pocket. Gave us haircuts. I went to the PX and bought me some pig feet. Life was wonderful. And they put us on them cattle trucks. We was talking and laughing on the cattle trucks and everything. Got over there. Some little guys, some guys came out and some smoking the bear hats and started pulling us off of them cattle trucks. And what hurt my feeling was, they said, get off my truck. I didn't know it was their truck. I would never got, they invited me to get on it. And they treated me so rough. And they were so hard and so harsh. Everything had to be done a certain way. This had to be done. I ain't never used to making up no beds. They not only want you to make it up, they want you to make it up correctly. Yeah. Had corners on it and how it had to be and your shoes had to be. And then in your, in, your, in your trunk, everything had to be in a certain order and had to be down there and all that. But you know what? They prepared me to take pride in what I did. Yeah. You see, it's hard to deal with folks that don't care. If you're around anybody that don't care, you need to find you somebody else to be around. Because if a person don't care about themselves, they really don't care about you. But after those eight weeks and four days, when I graduated from basic training, I was a different person for the rest of my life. Why is that? It's because I knew that I could take some things that I didn't think. You see, until you've been pushed to your limit, until you've been pushed past where you're comfortable, until you've been pushed past what you can do, you don't know what God can do through you. You see, I don't have to fall out, man. When my money gets funny and my, strange, my change gets strange and everything, I don't have to worry about it. Because why is that? Because I know 
that the, the, the cattle is his, the, the, the gold is his, the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver belonged to him. Why is it? Because I know that my God has made so many ways when I didn't have nothing. God made a way when my enemy dug ditches in front of me. God covered me and took, he prepared, he prepared, he prepared. That's when you don't have to walk around with no bumper stickers all on talking about how you love you. We'll, we'll see. Uh -huh. It was your granddad. That was your, uh, Nathan Lacey, he used, to, he used to say, he said, we're going to find out after a while who loved Jesus. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. We'll see. We'll see who you trust when your day comes. Sister Lisa Staten, uh, I guess you uncovered yourself to us more in that Sunday school when you talked about how when Brother Joe, when your daddy died. You said, I was a dad, I was a, <laughs> I was a daddy girl. And I found out that he had cancer and didn't have to face that and walk through that. But the thing about it is, is that when you got mamas and daddies that prepare you, they prepare you and they let you know, baby, so God got us. God has taken us over into another land. I'm almost through. Uh, Joshua 4, it's been, this, this has been good. He says in Joshua 4, he says, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spoke unto Joshua saying, take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe, and command you them, saying, Take you hence out of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest stood firm, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you. God giving you a testimony. Don't let the devil, don't, don't let the devil shut you up. The things that hurt you worse, Christian, that's what you need to be telling. Because you see, somebody need to hear that baby, that God is just preparing you. God, God, God is just preparing you. He says, and command you them, take out of the midst uh, where the priest's feet stood from, 12 stones, and you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place. And you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children. Give me two minutes of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder. According to the number of the tribes of his children of Israel. Y'all still with me? Verse 6. Moses. Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua says that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, what mean ye by these stones? Lady Deborah, these past two or three weeks that we spent with your mama there by the bedside, it was for a purpose. We live in, Sheriff, a time when there is such a disconnection among the generations. You see, when I came along in the 60s, uh, when Martin Luther King got killed, and then when uh, 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 Robert Kennedy got killed, and even before that, when President Kennedy got killed, and, and the dogs in Selma, Alabama, that, that, that was a connection that even though I was a child, I knew that God had prepared us as a people. I remember sitting in the colored section of the doctors. I remember not being able to go in the Dairy Queen, but had to go to the, the, the kid. But, but God was preparing, and I saw the connection between what God was doing and where. But now we have a generation who is so, uh, uh, feel like they, they, that you owe them. Feel, feel, feel like that, that, that you, that, <laughs> privileged. So you got to tell them. God had to prepare us, baby. 
And he prepared us for something. He didn't prepare us to be walking around with our pants down around our knees. He did not prepare us. I never seen a generation where children were so disrespectful. I go and I, I can't go to Hibbit Sports no more here and everything because they, they just they disrespect me so bad. They cuss, they they, they talk like I ain't, I ain't nothing. And when I mention it and everything, you know, he talked about me more. Oh, you think you more than other people? <sighs> but I want you to know something. Look at this fine young man over here. Y'all son, God, your child, God is preparing a new generation to cross over in order to possess the land. Clap your hands for the Lord.